Hello, this is Mike with Trey Wins RV Center here to congratulate you on your Jayco Alante 29F motorhome. You guys have picked a beautiful uh, RV here, and I'm going to walk you around it and show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. So let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a couple things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, you got a little opening for your TV here, and you got big awning. So leave room for plenty plenty of room for both of those then over here on our off camp side beside your slide I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be your power will be almost all the way at the rear of the unit your power cord is going to come out of this storage area here and then your docking station is going to be just in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle so park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite once we arrive, get a good parking spot. If you pick some up, set your uh, tire chocks. Next thing we're going to do is level our unit. All right, so we're at the Keystone Yam position. Come over here, turn on our power. Now we're going to do is simply touch auto level. Before you do, make sure the unit is clear of everything. I'm going to walk out and show you the pads I put down. We put down some stabilizing jack pads. They're going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and keep them from sinking into hot blacktop in some of the campsites. Just touch that auto level. It says operating. Go out and look at them. The front ones might be coming down first. Here they come. Right down under those jack pads I was telling you about. So he's going to run down. Front and rear. He's going to move around for a minute, get your unit level and stable. We're going to go ahead and keep continuing with the video. Once it's level and stable, we'll hook up our power and water. Again, big long 30 amp cord plugs in back here or stores back here you can close this door and run your power cord down through here or slide that to the side in the back and now you got enough room to get that down you run your hose down through there at the end of that 30 amp cord should you need to plug into a 110 there's a 30 to 15 amp reducer comes to your convenience pack is it continuing to run down in front of your tires is your docking station. Our docking station has the instructions all through here. City water. This is how we're going to hook up a camp site's city water outlet to fixtures. First, we're going to set all of our knobs like that. White down, green to the left, red up, blue to the left. We match that here. Next, our water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so I always use this. Hook it up over here where it says city water. Hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. Yours is located over on the campsite. And all we're doing at this point, folks, make sure our drain plug's in there. Get that on there nice and snug, then we can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose been out for a couple minutes, we'll go inside if we have to open the slide, but if not, get back to the sinks and showers, open them up, get all the air out of the lines, get a nice steady flow of water, then you can shut them off, and you're all set to camp. Now let's say we're going to go dry camping with this, we want to fill up our freshwater tank and use that. Well, in that case, there's a two-step process. We're going to start with power tank fill. Put your knobs accordingly. Really just turning your blue down. Again, water pressure regulator, same spot. Now what we're going to do is when we turn this water on, we're filling up our fresh tank. What you're going to want to do is go on the inside, watch your fresh water tank fill. Same spot you check your black and gray tanks. There's a fresh water button. Once that's full, come out here, remove that hose. Now we switch all this to dry camping. Way, bing, bing, bam, these match that. Now, whenever we want to utilize that water, we'll turn on a water pump. Generally indoors, but wherever you turn it on, make sure you turn it off at the same spot. 
All right, we're all set to camp with power and water. Uh, let's go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit continuing here in the docking station. So city water, power fuel, and then dry camp. That's how you set your knobs to winterize the unit. Make sure you bypass your hot water heater and then sanitize this sucking soapy water up into your tanks and clean them out for you. City water connection, black tank flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. Flush our black tank. Got a hot and cold little shower here with a spray port hose. Quick connect right there that'll connect to that. Down below here are our, our, our low point drains. Our water filter. Here's your new filter and the uh, changer to get that off there. Here's another area that you can run your hoses down through. Continuing over here on the off camp side. Above this is our Fluid for your furnace, a few things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of this, it does get hot. Uh, another thing is they sell bug guards, screened bug guards you can put over those. Front here is storage. Our generator, I'll start that up when we get indoors. Another small storage. So these lights, you can set them to turn on yourself or rock them to the front near a motion sensor light. A vent for our uh, range indoors. Down here is where we'll dump our black and gray tanks. Fuel and station. And another huge storage area. And we're on the rear of the unit. You got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there two, three times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roof and caulk. You will need to do it several times during the lifetime of this to keep it as new as possible. Your hitch, the towing information is all right there. Hitch limits. Come on this side, a lot more storage. Storage, storage, and then batteries and propane. Lift this up, pull out for your battery. Lock it back down. Got a quick connect here. This should run the griddle outdoors. You can pull that up underneath here and quick connect. There's your propane. Access to the back of your fridge. It's really for text to use. Again, our hot water heater. Two more big storage areas. In here, and keep this locked when you're traveling. I need some pop and soap and ripping your TV up out of here. But TV, uh, a remote. These are, I believe, a Fire TV. You have Furion sound system, a couple of 110s here, uh, Boss stereo out here with Bluetooth. This is a nice system out here. Shut that off. There's the power for that. I don't know if I'll pick up much in this metal building here, but let's see if I can get anything to come in. On. Not really getting many stations out here. Huh. But anyway, nice houses. Can't pick up much in this metal building. Uh, continuing around up front. More storage, motion sensor light. Inside here, let's go through our motor. All right, so in here we've got our battery. Up top there is where you'll check your transmission and oil. Over this side is our brake fluid, wiper fluid. About covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. All right, coming up inside the unit, first thing. I always like to point out your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Pretty simple. All these are lights and our power step. This is your inverter. That's where you turn that on at. You got dry cap. You need some power for that. Here's our main power for the unit. Our awning. 
to run this awning out. So on your awning, you only want to run them out until you can see a flap fall down. And you can see the bar. If you hold your out button down, it will continue to run itself out past that bar and start to run itself up backwards. So just run it down to that flap. Don't run it past that point. Like I said, if you do, it's just going to flip up onto itself. So just keep an eye on them when you're running them out. Make sure you don't run them out further than you need to. Continuing down here. To the left of my awning as I'm running it back in is your uh, solar controller panel. The whole purpose of this is to keep your solar panels from overcharging your battery. I'll send you a separate video from GoPower on this. Your only concern is just make sure that you keep it on your, uh, your wet battery. That battery you have in the unit. All right, continuing up inside. I'm gonna walk down the hallway here and open up this slide. Up here's our control panel. Slide one, extend. Pretty short slide, opens up pretty quickly. All right, so we're gonna press down and stop. That's actually gonna prime it. See that light come on? That means you're primed. Hit start. Starts right up. You can turn this on and off out here as well. Taking this panel off. Right would be prime. Do the same thing out here. Make sure you have your door back on here, secured, good for travel. All right, come back in here. Um, Generators off. Down here is where you'll check the levels of your tanks, your propane, your battery, fresh, black, and gray tanks. That fresh button's one I said to hold down when filling your fresh paint or tank. Tank heaters, what these are is 12 volt pads that are on your tanks to keep them from freezing if you're in inclement weather. Only use them if you're in inclement weather. Here's where you turn on the water pump to utilize that uh, fresh water tank. Here's where you turn on your water heater for gas. Over here for electric, it does make a difference. Uh, choose correctly. This just shows you the service that you're on. Down here is a thermostat. I'm gonna turn the AC on. Crank it down, let you hear that blasting. So if you get at a campsite and it's already hot in here, open up this quick dump. That allows it to start cooling because these are the returns. Start cooling the cool air. And then when you close this, that'll blast colder air through these. Now you notice when I shut the AC off, shuts right off. I'm gonna crank the heat up. Hear that return feel that too now you'll notice when i shut the heat off it is going to take a couple minutes for that fan to cycle through before it shuts off over here is where you change the levels of that fan here's your heat lighting for back in the hallway accident light for in here as well i got tons of storage here down below that storage is my 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector so that's always running off your battery. Keep that in mind. Nor cold fridge is pretty simple to run. Just turn it on here. Modes. Let's go back to, we've got gas. Gas. Auto. So auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as I would unplug that, they would say A and then the gas. Here we go. Next is auto electric, electric by itself, or gas. Here's your three. Uh, over here's your temperature, one through five, five being the coldest. I think I'm pushing this too fast. There we go. Shift that off there. So if it does have... Uh, seating so you can travel with this 
and this will also make into a bed over here your table will fold down in the back lift it up off the back and fold that down put your flat cushions on top that'll give you another bed these also have seat belts so you can travel in here as well talk about our top bunk safety on this is that buckle right now i can turn this on and try to run this up and down it's not going to do anything with that buckle on so i'm gonna shut that off undo my buckle it's just like a belt buckle while i'm there there's your smoke alarm so now turn this on turn on lighting up there and it should run down like that right down on top of your um seats keep an eye on it when you run it down make sure you don't run it further down than you need to run this back up as it gets up there i'll snap that again i don't remember she just won't won't do nothing with that snap shut that off uh coming to our front area here all your basic controls for um a vehicle your heating and cooling there you have a nice little laptop area here for your passenger head down in the hallway to our bathroom a couple things to mention in here over here for our light and fan it's a hand crank open exhaust fan there this is a set of doors that you want to make sure you have snapped safely for travel you have a 110 in here as well and some plumbing to maintain it's almost all packs nowadays but you're moving this up and down the road just keep an eye on things make sure nothing's wiggle loose over time heading this back into our bedroom which shows me another door i want to make sure that you know to bungee this door both of these doors actually you want to bungee them close for travel latch for your door here so again snap these open for travel it's gonna keep them from bouncing around on you the power port here one touch is a blue light hold it in for a nice reading light another television in here separate thermostat for your ac back here Emergency exit window. That about covers everything in here. It's that like we're leaving the cab site. Let's close the unit up. Let me show you your TV back here working. Remote's going to be top drawer here. So again, we're traveling through the unit. Making sure we've secured doors. Shutting off lights. Here in the hallway, we do have prep for a TV here. Lighting. Same down here. Got a holder for a TV. For your bunk areas. Coming into your kitchen. Put this top up. Makes a nice backsplash. Rock your panel light up. Turn that gas on. Hit your spark when your gas is turned on. These will light up here. Oven, same way. Turn that to light, open this up. When you hit your spark, that will light this up. And if you look, you'll probably be able to see the reflection down here. Just make sure that it's lit and then turn it to your desired temperature. Uh, rock that light down, it becomes an oven light. Make sure you put this glass down for travel. I uh, do have a surface light and a high and low fan up here in your microwave again more plumbing to keep an eye on 
There's your access panel to all of it. Now we can close the unit up. Go through your manuals, make sure you've checked everything out. We'll start back here and shut our lights off. Oh, that's going to be our accent lights up top there. Put them off here. Back, shut the TV off. Doors and drawers. Walk through your unit. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede our slide from coming in. All drawers are closed. We're going to hit retract. Comes in rather quickly. See the importance of having everything closed down that hallway. Come down here. Shut off all of these lights. Go back to our control panel. Turn it back on. And we're just going to hit all retract. It says operating. So what that means is bringing up our stabilizing jacks. Then we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, and head on up to the dump station. Now it's the dump station park accordingly. The dump's going to be behind your tires on your driver's side of your vehicle here. Once you arrive, you've got a 10-foot hose coming to your convenience pack. Hook that up. And the first thing we do is pull our black handle. Always remember, black is sewage, gray is your gray waters. So pull your black handle. When that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, check the level of your black tank. If it shows empty or close to it, come back out here, leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and hook it up to this tank flush. Again, emphasize in leaving that black handle open, turn that tank flush on and let that run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose, make sure all that, uh, Wash out the water you just put in there has drained. Then close your black and pour your gray. Now when my grays are done draining, before putting everything away, I like to come over to my hot water heater if I'm done camping for the year. I don't want to leave hot water in here. I'm going to open this up. Lift up on this pressure release valve. Now be careful, some hot water is going to come out of there. When that's done, push that down, otherwise your door won't close. And then pull that drain plug. Again, when these grays are done, we're going to take and close our gray, take our sewage tank, hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Elante for many years to come. Happy camping!